the other trick, they're like tricks through and through, like weaved through this entire like video. We're back with another super educational beauty video today. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you pro makeup artist tips and tricks that are gonna completely change your makeup life. Now, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I'm over on Instagram too, so come say hi there because we do a little bit of reels, some unboxing, and a bit of everything that I get up to when I'm not filming on YouTube. Now let's head straight into the video. I'm gonna make this really easy for you guys to understand. These are tips and tricks that I feel like most people don't know, but also as a pro makeup artist, sometimes I do these day in, day out, and it doesn't feel like a trick to me. So I do realize that these are tips and tricks that could benefit so many of you guys. So I really wanted to kind of just lay it all out for you guys, share all of my expertise with you, and let you guys take away those tips and tricks so it can completely change your makeup life too. So let's get started. I don't have anything on my skin. I'm just very quickly going to add something because my skin's recovering from my recent radio frequency microdermabrasion session so it's a little bit dry i've been using this lately and oh my god it's amazing this is the lancer what is this lancer triple peptide drops with vitamin e and niacinamide so good like so good honestly i've been waking up in the morning like oh my god my skin looks so good so yeah i'm just gonna like pat this on you can actually mix that in with your moisturizer too now i'm gonna just let that sink in while that's sinking in let me just have a sip of my amazing cappuccino that i made did any of you guys end up getting these pods so good i'll put them in the description again for you now the finished kind of look i'm not going for any specific look but you'll see that it all looks very natural so these are things that you can really kind of like do along with whatever look it is that you're doing. Now, I'm just gonna very quickly put some moisturizer on using my Marrakesh Rich. I've got my moisturizer in the palm of my hand. So this is the first trick I wanna show you. Now, sometimes what it is, is we don't wanna end up putting a lot of layers on the skin. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing in a kind of like liquid highlighter in with my moisturizer. Now the liquid highlighter I'm using is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, but I'm using shade six, which is actually a bit dark for me currently because I don't have a tan. I would usually use this shade when I have a tan. Now what this is doing, you can see I've mixed them both, like there's a bit of that there, a bit of my moisturizer there. Now I'm mixing that together and then putting it all over my face. I'm getting my moisturization because obviously I've got my little serum on underneath which is giving me that extra boost now my moisturizer is going to be mixed with this so that it adds that luminosity to my skin but i'm not layering on too many products so it kind of like does everything in one for me now the reason i've used a slightly darker shade is because another trick is kind of like two in one trick but another trick is that when you are feeling very dull or very kind of like pale and you feel like you need more color, the trick is, is to add that color right at the beginning with your kind of like liquid highlighter. And you'll see that this is gonna just all of a sudden give me that color to my skin. It's not covering anything obviously, but it's gonna give me my kind of like moisture. It's gonna give me that glow as well so that when I go in with my concealer and everything, it's kind of like not looking extremely pale when I put everything on. So had I not to put this color on with my moisturizer, that lumen, like, like illuminator, I couldn't think of the word that was like, uh, uh, but it was, uh, you know, and still, what the hell? Uh, you know, the glow, let's just call it the glow. If had I not put that colored glow on, then basically I would have gone in with my concealer shortly. And because my skin is already looking a bit, it was looking a bit pale, I would have put that concealer on and everything would look even more pale. And then I've got to work on bringing that color back into my skin. So this way I've given it that burst of color, that really nice glow so that my skin looks just healthy. And now when we go in with our concealer, we're not gonna go in with anything which is too light. We're gonna go in with something which is a little bit deeper. So we're kind of getting that coverage, but we're not brightening it way too much. Not as much as I usually would do. Okay, so what I'm gonna use is my Hourglass Vanish Concealer, but I'm using the shade Dune. This is quite a warm, like a deep shade for me. So it's not like overly light. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna apply this in the areas that I feel that I need it. Now this is another thing. Usually if you want a really nice kind of flawless finish, you know, you go all in how you usually see me do with my usual 
tutorials. I said usually about 20 times there. These are tricks when we don't want, we don't want too many layers, but we also want that coverage there, but it isn't necessarily going to be the type of flawless look that we would usually go for. It's still going to be a really nice flawless look, but it's just not going to be as brightening in those areas as how I would usually go. But this is a good kind of trick for you to use if you don't have much time or you don't really want to, you know, go for that type of look. So by the end of it, you can kind of decide, okay, this is the kind of look I wear as well, you know, so you, you can decide to implement that specific trick into your routine. Now, what I'm going to be doing is just applying a little bit here and being very strategic with where I'm applying it. Not a lot of the product because this spreads very easily. And I'm also going to just apply a little bit here. We're going to let that just sit for a little while. And someone just rang the doorbell. That's really annoying because I can't go and open it. But I think it's my Zara package. That would be amazing if it is because we're going to New York. We're going to New York. I can't wait. I'm really excited. I've also been doing like a lot of winter shopping because I don't want to like freeze to death. Let's continue. Hopefully he'll just leave the package outside for me if it is for me. Okay, we're going to go in with my Hourglass concealer brush. Oh my God, someone just opened the door. Oh, it's my husband. Thank God. I'm basically going to just buff this in. So I'm just like pressing, like buffing it into the skin. You will see how this ends up kind of like spreading and it gives you that really nice kind of like the brightening effect, but without it looking too pale. So it's kind of like lightened that kind of darkness around my dark, around my dark, <laughs> that darkness around my eye area. It's kind of just made it my actual skin color everywhere else. You know, the color it really should be. Okay, now here, we're gonna just kind of like press this in. Now, all we're doing is kind of like balancing out that color difference there. So that darkness that's there, it's helping to kind of make that the same color as everywhere else without kind of masking the whole area, if you see what I mean. So this is a good little trick, you know, if you just want to get rid of those dark circles, but you also don't want it to look like you completely masked the area. All of this, what I've just done, makes a big difference because of the fact that we added that liquid glow underneath, which is a lot warmer, right? So it warmed up the entire face, which made it easier to use this color concealer, like a deeper concealer, because had I have used that deeper concealer, I'm just kind of like putting this over other areas, just the leftover, whatever's on the brush. That deep concealer, had I have put it onto my skin without that really nice warm glow underneath, then it would have looked very different. Like it would have just looked very different to the rest of my face. So that warm, glow underneath has just helped to like kind of give that nice veil of color without it being an actual foundation so she, you can see how this is kind of like balanced out that whole area now it doesn't look like there's much separation between my skin color here and that darkness around the eyes it's kind of given me that it's just like covered my dark circles without kind of brightening it you know this next trick i want to show you i know a lot of people already do but i really want to explain as to why it works for you you've obviously heard of using lipstick on your cheeks right so i do that sometimes and the reason i do it is not just because oh wow i've got like a lipstick and i can use it on my cheek it's genuinely because maybe i'm going for a specific type of look and i just cannot find that blush shade but also it does stay on a lot longer so most of these kind of like liquid or cream blushes that you see these days they do stay a lot longer like I feel like they're getting better and better I don't always want to see like a sheen in there I want it to be kind of like look like it's just really part of the skin if you see what I mean the only time I do do this is if I'm using that same lipstick shade on the lips and I just want it to look because it's always going to look different to the lips even if you're using the same lipstick and you're using it on the lips and you want that kind of color on the cheeks it's always going to look slightly different it's just going to complement it it's not going to look like oh I've got the same exact color the color I want to use today is Fire Bird from the NARS Power Matte collection. The reason being is because this specific shade is great for my skin tone because this is like a rusty color and that's the kind of look I'm going for. The trick that I want to show you is actually how you apply it. You don't just start kind of like scribbling all over your cheeks. You will basically take your lipstick and first off I always apply this to my lips. So I'm just going to like just spread this like very lightly. I don't want like a full blocky color on my lips. And the reason I'm doing this first is that I'm gonna explain to you. I didn't have anything on my lips by going. And there's a reason 
for that. That's another trick, which I'll tell you in a bit. All you do want to make sure is your lips are smooth and exfoliated, you know, like they're not dry and flaky, because if they are, then this is not going to look good. The other trick, they're like tricks through and through, like weaved through this entire like video. Trick is to get smooth lips. Get your exfoliator, your facial exfoliator, and put it onto your lips. Make sure your lips are dry. Scrub it very gently and then wash it off. That's going to exfoliate your lips for you. Then you have smooth lips ready for this. Now, the reason I haven't applied any kind of like lip gloss or like balm underneath is because I want this color to actually stay there. If I apply something which is kind of liquidy or like, you know, can move around and then I put color on top, it's just going to leak. It's going to go. So the trick is, is to really get that color onto your lips, stuck onto your skin. So I've really kind of been dabbing it on and then with my finger and just literally like kind of pressing it and flicking it. I am not worried about my lip line at the moment. I just want to get that color really infused into my lips so that it actually looks like it's a natural color. You know, you want it to look fleshy. Okay, that to me now looks like, okay, if I look close up, it isn't gonna look like I've got actual lipstick on. It just looks like it's literally part, like my nat natural lips are this kind of color. So now that we've got that really stuck in there, I'm gonna go ahead, grab this same lip color, and I'm getting a brush. You can get anything which is fluffy. This is my F37 brush. And I'm basically gonna just kind of like go over it like this. And then I am gonna just, I'm gonna start buffing this into my cheeks. And I can already see that color coming through. Hopefully you can see like this side, there's nothing. And then this side, I'm just kind of like pressing it and flicking. I don't want a lot. I really, really don't want too much there. I'm gonna put it onto the other side as well now. That's honestly enough. Right, my lips. So let's just leave that for a second. My lips, I wanna make sure that I lock that in. Firstly, I'm gonna go in with my lip pencil because I really wanna kind of like just define my lips a little bit. And this is my Kevin O'Qua Unforgettable Lip Definer. This color is divine, one of my favorites. Now, by putting that color into the lips there, we've kind of like locked it in. Now, the reason I'm going in with my lip liner after, and I do this a lot on my clients as well, is because it gives me a better idea of how this lip color looks lined and how the lip shape should be. So what I'm doing is just grabbing my pencil and I'm gonna like feather stroke in. So I honestly do not line it properly. Like, you know, like from start to finish. It's very lightly touching my skin. It's like barely touching it. And then I smudge it, you know, so it looks like actual lips. It doesn't look like you've drawn anything in. You know, when you apply lip color and you don't apply lip liner, you feel like your lips just look really small. So this is the way to make them look bigger, but make them look super natural. So you literally just feather, get your finger and smudge in. Feather, smudge in. Just remember that I'm not applying too much when I am feathering. That will actually give the illusion of slightly bigger lips, but very natural. I'm happy with that. They look plump. I'm happy with that. What I want to do is get my, I've got my lip maximizer from Dior, my absolute favorite one. I'm just going to like, oh, my voice went a bit croaky there. And <clears throat> dab this on. I don't want a full on glossy look, but I also don't want it to look dry. Now what this is doing, it's giving me that kind of like, it's really infusing my lips with that hydration. So make sure you do use something which is actually hydrating. Don't just use a random gloss. This is something which does give me that boost of hydration. So I know that now, even though I've got that color locked in underneath, this has gone on top. So it's kind of locked it in, but it's also keeping, it's like infusing my lips with moisture too. So that that dryness that's there because of applying the lip color before I've applied anything is being kind of of like paired up with that hydration so that it doesn't dry out my lips but that color stays locked there too genuinely if you were to look close up to my lips they look so much more natural it looks naturally plump there's a natural color there and it, it it's the best way honestly the best trick to give yourself naturally plump looks lips <laughs> that don't look like you've applied loads of different, like, you know, you, you've really spent a lot of time there. And I feel like that's the best type of look. You know, when you look at someone and you're like, wow, that just looks so natural, but what has she done? Now you can see that we've got some color on my cheeks. Now what I want to do is start kind of mattifying certain areas. Now I'm going to show you this little trick that I use. I do set my face because obviously I don't want it to look, you know, greasy. But what I do is I set my cheek area and the perimeter of my face. You set it with a trans, with not a translucent powder, but a face powder, which is warmer. So you're not using your standard kind of like translucent powder, which is, you know, no color in there. Okay, first off, what I'm going to do is 
get my Real Techniques setting brush and my Hourglass Vanish translucent powder. I'm going to now dust this onto certain areas where I know I do want it to look, you know, pretty matte. So I'm just going in between my brows and just above my brows. I'm going to go onto my under eye area here and just kind of over my nose and chin area. I feel like I've still got that nice glow in most of the other areas, but the important bits are nice and matte. Okay, now I'm gonna get my darker powder. This is my Makeup Forever Ultra HD Setting Powder in 4.2, which is tan neutral. So this is kind of like a bit darker than my skin color. Now I'm using my Makeup Forever 152 brush, and I'm gonna just press it into this powder and then press it into the lid so that there's not any, like too much excess product on that brush. And now I'm gonna start kind of almost like sculpting my face a little bit but it's setting those areas too so that's the trick you're using a kind of like a shade which is close to your bronzer color but in a setting powder and we're going to use that to kind of like sculpt the face and set it all at the same time so that's another little trick for you guys so what i'm doing is going from my kind of top of my ear where i would normally sculpt my cheeks and you can keep going back into the powder whenever you kind of want and then taking it along the perimeter there and then I like to take it just underneath there a little bit too. See, that has just warmed up the face. And that trick, I think, is something which is great. You're using basically a setting powder in a darker shade to set the perimeter of your face because what it does, it sculpts it, it also sets it. So, you know, you don't have to, you're not using too many layers of, of makeup. Next up, we are gonna do the brows and I'm gonna show you something because I actually have a few gray hairs in my brows. I know it's really annoying. It's so frustrating, but this is what we do to cover them. Even with clients, even myself sometimes, sometimes I can't be bothered to be honest with you, but you know, this this is a really good trick. I use my Color Wow Root Cover Up in dark brown. Absolutely love this. And I get the small side of the brush, dip it into that color. And basically what I do is I just kind of like press it into my brows to cover up the dark hair. And you can go back and forth to really kind of like get into the hair to make sure you cover it. I do this before I even start shading in my brows because it just covers up the hair, which means I can focus on shaping. And this is great because I feel like you don't have to worry about it peeking through when you've shaped your brows. Because basically what happens is if you shape your brows, like, and I, I can tell you this, first hand because I, I do it. So if I shape my brows and I haven't used this color well on my brows, even after shaping my brows and I use a brow pencil, you can see those rogue gray hairs popping through. And I don't know why, but they are like, it feels like it's the thickness of a tree trunk, literally. It's so, th just the gray hair is so thick. So it just, it's like right there. So this covers it up really nicely. I don't have to worry about it afterwards. Sometimes, like I said, I can't be bothered and I don't care. It depends what I feel like. If I have time, I really want to put the effort in, then this is a great trick. So this covers up that dark hair. So now I'm working from scratch. Now, now I feel like I don't have to worry, I don't have to worry about the gray hair. It's a nice little trick for you because I feel like it really does help genuinely. Like that's covered up that gray hair. Now I don't need to worry. Now, another thing I very quickly do with this is I have my hairline is very uneven on this side because my hair naturally grows towards this way so when I'm wearing a center part like low sleek pony it actually is pretty difficult for me because this side it always lifts from the root and it kind of wants to go that way so I'm kind of like over the years I've been forcing it to kind of sit that way I have like my hairline is very uneven here like you can see this is really nice and clean and then here it just kind of like goes up because I have a little crown there is that what you call it a crown I don't know what I do is I get this and I kind of like fill my hairline there again only if I can be bothered and basically this kind of like evens it out for me I genuinely think I've got an actual grey hair there as well I can see it check it out I know guys I know maybe you're not meant to I don't know what they say they say you're meant to do it or you're not meant to do it I don't really care that was annoying me and anywhere I feel like I can see scalp a bit more, just add a little bit of it. So yeah, that's kind of like evened out my hairline now. So that's how I use the Color Wow powder. I absolutely love it. I feel like everyone needs it. Get the shade which works for you. Black would be way too dark for me. So the dark brown works really well. So it doesn't look, you know, like too black. But yeah, that brow thing, amazing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly kind of shape them. And because I want a very kind of light natural look, I'm just literally going to 
lightly shape them i don't want too much going on here like i don't want like super strong looking brows and i'm just gonna curl my lashes so if i'm not wearing like false lashes then i always curl my lashes so I curl them, I apply the smallest amount of mascara and sometimes if I know that, okay, I know I'm gonna end up kind of like touching my eyelid with the mascara, then I kind of like use a brush. So I just lift my like eyelid up. Why can't I find the words today? You know, really to get into the root, trust me, this helps. I do this with clients too, but you really want to get into that root, just lift the eyelid up. And that way you don't have to focus on pulling it all the way to the end of the lash by just touching the very underside of the root. Like all I've done is brushed it into the root and that gives me that really nice like open eye look and it doesn't actually look like I've gone in with spiky lashes. You know, it doesn't look like I've gone all the way to the end. You don't need to drag the mascara all the way to the end of the mascara, to the end of the lashes in order to give yourself that really nice open eye look. Like just doing it this way by lifting the lid going touching the root and that's it not brushing it all the way through will give you such a nice natural look which doesn't look like you're actually wearing like mascara but it does look like there's something there it doesn't look like it's completely blank you know so that is a trick which i think you guys are gonna love as well and last up when i want to add that extra bit of luminosity i basically use a another like kind of like illuminating product so i'm using my ease drop from fenty it's the this actual shade is what taffy topaz and i just put it where i need it that's it and i literally just kind of press this in and this to me gives me that kind of glow back in the areas that i want it without compromising the rest of the face. So just add a little bit on the chin. So that basically is a combination of all of my kind of like makeup artist tricks and tips that I use that I feel that they will, they're gonna be completely life-changing for you when it comes to your makeup because like things like the brow product like the, using that powder on your brows by the way you don't have to have gray hair to use that because if you use that brow color that color that powder color that i told you about and you use that in the brow it gives you that full effect so if you even if you don't have gray hairs it's not just for covering up dark like gray hair it's there to kind of give you that really fullness to your that really fullness that real fullness to your brows as well and obviously you can use it to correct your hairline and things like that or where you feel that you can see your scalp a little bit more and you don't want to really see it that much you can cover it up there and also you know all these little tri tips and tricks that come together they're very small tips and tricks but they genuinely make the biggest change to your makeup game so i really do hope you can see for yourself and it's all really helped you and wherever you are in the world i hope you have the best day ever I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you managed to take away some tips and tricks that you can incorporate into your daily makeup routine. Now, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.